Now, you might consider probability theory and statistics to be alien, too difficult, not worth the effort, utterly unlike what we do in our everyday life. But this, in fact, is actually quite false. For instance, estimating probabilities or making inferences about a population based on a sample is a lot like what we do when we watch Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune, we get a sample. The sample is the number of letters in a word, the specific letters that are revealed. And from that sample, we extrapolate to a potential population, a potential word that that sample came from. When we just have a little information, it can be difficult. When we have more information, it can get a little easier. The quality of the information can make the task easy. And eventually, it can just seem downright simple. We do similar things when we recognize objects and faces. So even though this face is partially occluded, taken from a picture that is literally decades old, you can still recognize it as me. You can extrapolate from that partial and corrupt data to see who it is and, of course, that it's hideous. So what we learn is something like what the mathematician and statistician Abraham de Maubier realized, that we can often form political beliefs as accurate, true, correct beliefs using inferences from incomplete data, even data with errors or noise. And in fact, our brain has really always known this. And in many cases, our brain has evolved to make inferences from incomplete and corrupt data. We're using our system one inference strategies. We do this often. Sometimes we're so good at it that we hardly even notice the stupendous inferential feat that is responsible for the information that our brain seems to quickly and easily deliver to us. Unfortunately for us, we didn't evolve to be able to make such inferences across a wide variety of circumstances that are relevant in our daily lives now. And that's where statistics comes in. Our brain works hard for us, but our brain isn't equipped innately and automatically to make some of the inferences that are important to help us understand and react in a good way to the world and the environment. So what do we do when we make a statistical inference? What do we do when we consume a bit of statistics? Well, people rarely treat them as such, but most statistics that you see are in fact statistical hypotheses. They are hypotheses about the nature of the population, of the environment, of the world, based upon that partial information, our sample. In specific, they are hypotheses about the relative frequency of some event or property or relationship in the real world population that we infer from our sample. And even more specifically, they are actually a hypothesis about the range of possible values for that relevant relative frequency within the population that cluster around the frequency in our sample, as we shall see. As a result, we can see that by its very nature, statistics is a form of amplitude inference, a type of induction. It goes from information that we have explicit and available to us, that is our sample, and it goes beyond what's guaranteed to be true given that information. And in doing so, it makes explicit and available for us new information that we otherwise wouldn't have. But in doing so, it also incurs a certain amount of epistemic risk. It's not guaranteed that the conclusions of our inferences are in fact going to be true, 
even when our premises are. And the key insight that drives statistics is that a representative sampling of a population allows one to extrapolate from the sample to the population with a high degree of reliability. And really, it's even more powerful than that. We can make that inference. We can determine the degree of epistemic risk, how reliable that inference is. And we can even manipulate the form of that inference to manipulate the amount of risk, to manage the risks that we take in making those inferences. And that is an incredibly powerful thing. And it's really only been available to human beings for a very short period of time. So what's the basis of that statistical inference strategy? Well, the basis of it is a relationship between our sample and our population. And so statistical inference is in part based upon getting a good unbiased sample, minimizing bias in our sample. And there are three main considerations when you think about how to gather a sample that minimizes the bias in that sample. Of course, you want to gather a sample, if at all possible, for the inference that you want to make from the population you're concerned with. You want to randomly select that sample from the population. Now, you might take a moment and think about why is it that it would be useful or desirable to randomly select members of a population for your sample as opposed to picking out, I don't know, every third one, say. The answer to that is that by randomizing our sample selection, we minimize the risk that that sample selection introduces biases in the way that it goes about selecting individuals. If there is no pattern, or hardly any pattern in our sample selection, then that pattern can introduce a bias. The next consideration is the size of the sample. As we'll see, the central limit theory starts to become relevant for sample sizes as small as 30. However, in general, we want a sample from our population that's large enough for us to make an inference with a relatively narrow range of possible frequencies, but that doesn't cost too much, balances out those considerations. Finally, we need to be concerned about the particularities of our sampling methodology. In measuring the individuals that we randomly select in our reasonably large sample, do we introduce biases? Do they introduce biases, either by measurement or by attitude or so on? So our samples are our incomplete data. Now we want to think about how it is that we can make inferences to real world properties from that sample. But before we do that, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about an example of the difficulties, even with trained scientists, in generating methodologically unbiased samples. <laughs> 